Thanks so much. Thank you. Check test one two 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 two. Hey hey hey. One two check. One two test one two. Testing one two three 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 four four four. Test test.
Hi. Great. Good. Oh, hi. <laughs> Just say hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome in here into the interview room, uh, hometown girl, Naples native, Chris Tamales, and a Rolex first time winner this year on the LPGA Tour. Chris, thank you for coming in, and I know you're a little busy this week. It must be a little bit different. Tell us, you know, how this week has gone by so far and, you know, how much different it is, you know, balancing requests, uh, dentist appointments, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a great week. I knew it was going to be very busy, but at the same time, I kind of planned ahead um, for that and just prepared myself. Uh, I knew that there were going to be a few extra requests um, just because I am from here and I've, um, you know, I mean, Greg from the, the newspaper here does a really good job of writing about me and... Um, so it was going to be a very busy week. Um, so I just plan my day. I write everything down on my calendar, and I just plan accordingly. Perfect. Now, I know I read Greg's articles. Great. Um, we had um, you missing out on the event the past couple of years, and you said, you know, a little, it was a little bit of a disappointment. How, yeah. how happy were you to earn your way in and to actually have a spot in this field and to play in front of Naples. Yeah, absolutely. The last few years have been a huge disappointment. Um, I've tried to make myself accessible, um, and I've done a couple things down here the week of the event um, just to help out. I'm very thankful that CME Group and has brought us down here, and they think uh, as highly of Naples as I do. And we are very fortunate on tour to have this event. So at the same time, um, this year being here and qualifying has been fantastic. I mean, it's a dream for me. This doesn't get any better. I Winning was a great experience, but winning was just uh, the culmination of a week. And I didn't know, you know, going in there that I was going to win that week. It was just kind of like, after it happened, and then it was exciting afterwards. Um, but now, I mean, this was this is a whole week of an experience instead of just uh, an experience after the tournament. So it's been terrific. I'm glad it's the it's the last week of the year. I think it's a great way to finish. Um, and then I'm gonna go home and sit on the couch. I can't <laughs> wait. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you're in your 11th year on tour this year um the perfect story of you know a veteran you know keeping on to her dream grinding it out um what do you have to say for yourself just in that regard of you know just it's so hard to win out on tour these days it is, and yeah. you, you know you came in and you never gave up and and won it yeah i to me winning wasn't winning is awesome and it's something that you want to do obviously um i've won i guess on every stage now like a junior tournament in college and um and now on the lpga and that's awesome um at the same time it wasn't um to me it wasn't gonna like define my career i mean I remember a few years ago, um, Nat, I was talking to Natalie Galbus, and she was like, hey, how, how long have you been out here now? And I was like, oh, I've been playing for nine years. And she's like, you know, the average lifespan of an LPGA player is, I guess, like four years or something, which I never thought about it like that. Um, and to me, I was successful. I had a job. I had everything I wanted. I have got, you know, a nice home and a nice car. And uh, where else can you travel the world and and have you know everything that a normal person wants and strives for and play golf i mean no i'm not a superstar but i don't it, it wasn't that's not my goal sure. i'm happy to um you know write my thank you letters every week and be a great pro am partner and and support an event um and just be me perfect all right let's open it up for questions you have a question? Raise your hand. No, Greg no does. questions. <laughs> Greg, I talk to you all the time. <laughs> now that this week is here, you know, how has it been so far and what are you looking forward to over the next, you know, four days outside of today? Um, 
It's been exactly what I had anticipated. Uh, it's been great. Yesterday, my pro-am group was was uh, awesome. I played with you know Bill and um, and a, a fella who I know from Tampa. Um, he owns Kane's Furniture, and I mean I've he's a patient of my husband, so like I've been to games with him, and we had a great time. And Mark DeVoe, who I went to high school with his niece. Um, and I've known her, you know, since I was probably 13 or something. And, and then another guy that's on the chair, uh, on the board for the paper here. So we had a great time. Uh, Mark and I had a lot of things to talk about. He was catching me up with Anne and everything. And, uh, the rest of the time I've been thrilled to be a part of a couple of the dinners for CME, um, at the Ritz at the beach. And I've told a couple of people, I haven't been there since my high school prom. So we had our prom at the Ritz-Carlton, which probably isn't normal for wow. most people, but um, when you're from Naples and this is how, this is your lifestyle, we, we do that. So, uh, so that was really cool. They, actually, the valet guys, like, uh, they, they're like familiar. They're like, you coming back tomorrow? I'm like, no, no, I'm actually having dinner with my parents at home tomorrow, which will be nice, but at the same time, like the food at the Ritz is probably a little bit better than, than my mom. My mom's cooking, but um, so then the rest of the week, uh, today's like a really light day for me. Monday I played the Pro-Am for Mark Lai, and then I had the XM interview downstairs, and then I played like a quick nine, and then I had the dinner. I got dressed at the stoplight um, when I was on Vanderbilt Road <laughs> going to the Ritz, and then... Um, Today, and then yesterday, I played the early pro-am, practiced a little bit, and then uh, had the dinner later on. And then today, I went to the dentist, and then uh, came out here. So it's been, it's been easy. No cavities. Yeah, and no cavities, which I'm always nervous about. So it's great. Successful day so far. So, yeah. Thought I was busy. Go ahead, Bethan. So I know you're you're from Michigan, like you were born in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Just kind of give me the timeline on sure. when you moved here full time yep. as a kid. So I was born in Michigan, and that's where my parents worked. Um, they owned a golf course in the Thumb area, Lapeer. And but I have older sisters, and when I was when they had gone off to college. Um, in the early 80s, like mid 80s, I guess, my parents had always come down here. And in, I think it was like 1987, we bought a house. And uh, in second grade, I started going to school here. I went to Seacrest. Um, and I would start this start school in Michigan. And then when the weather got bad and it was cold um, and the course was closed for the season, I would come down here and then go to Seacrest and then I would go back. Um, and then starting in middle school, I had somebody would stay with me and my parents would go back to work and I would go to school here um, full time. And then during the summer, I would go back to Michigan and work and uh, help out. And yeah, 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 I'd work for my parents and um, I was there. So then obviously, I, you know, I graduated from school here and everything. Um, so we've been, we've had a home here since the early, mid, mid 80s. And uh, to me, you know, I mostly grew up here. Since I went to high school and everything here um, and middle school and elementary school, all my friends are here. Um, I'm a proud Michigander and I am um, a huge Lions fan and I am very um, proud of that state, but, but this is my hometown. I mean, I, this is where most of probably me comes from. So, so how many people do you think will come out? How many people have asked you for tickets? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, my mom was starting to email me and be like, hey, can you get tickets for these people and these people? I was like, make a list. And during the tournament week, I will fill, fill this and put this in, um, in uh, will call for them. So I've probably put in maybe like 40 tickets, but I've also... Um, you know, the club that I represent, Gray Oaks, I mean, they talked to the tournament director, I think, in order to put like a package together so, so they could come out and support me. Um, I have, I usually do a good job of thanking, um, the, the volunteers on the holes and everything. Um, and this week I've been even more, uh, 
aware of that just because I know they know who I am. And at the same time, I'm very thankful for everybody who's taking time out of their, out of their days and out of their weeks and you know, their golf and their tennis to, to help us out here. So they're, they're fans and, um, you know, everybody says go Naples to me as I walk by. So I just, you know, I'm very appreciative and thankful. So just one last one. When was the last time you played a tournament in Naples? High school. I mean, high school matches, really. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> 99. Go ahead. Hi, Chris. Joe Gervin from the local NBC affiliate. Hi. We love having you here because it Thank gives you. us storylines. Sure. But, of course, there's no better storyline than you being in contention and winning on Sunday. Well, thanks, so Joe. So <laughs> is there any added advantage to on-course performance from – the fan support, knowing the area. Is there anything that you can lean on in that respect? No, I mean, I know everybody's cheering for me, but at the same time, that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't lead into made putts. So, um, you know, I, I know that I have a lot of uh, local support here and people will be cheering for me. And for that, I'm very thankful. At the same time, I don't want to put that pressure on myself. Um, I'm, I'm just here to enjoy the week. Uh, I obviously want to play well, as does the other 69 girls that are playing this week. So, you know, we're here to play the best we can and then, uh, and then give ourselves a break. It's been a long season. We've been playing since uh, January, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And I, uh, I don't – I think um, – it's a little extra pressure just because I want to play well for my town, but at the same time, I know that that doesn't actually help me. So I'm just going to tee it up and keep it in the fairway and see how it goes. You don't strike me as somebody that would, you know, be a changed person after winning on the LPGA Tour, but no. has anything changed either in your game or outside of your game, just in normal life, anything that's changed so far? No. Zero. Okay. No, I, uh, my trophy is still in the box. Um, we need to find a good place Chase, for that. Yeah. yeah. Mental. And, um, no, you know, I still vacuum my own house and, um, do everything normally. Thank I don't, nice. uh, think anything would change. Um, so... No, just me. All right. Any other questions? Greg, go ahead. Uh, can you talk about motion? And uh, I sure. mean, do you think all this would have happened with, without him? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that um, a caddy necessarily makes a player. Uh, I work really hard on my own. At the same time, it's a relationship as it is anything. I probably spend more time with him you know, throughout the course of the season than I do with anybody else. And uh, he, you know, he bugs me sometimes, just like I'm sure I bug him. And, uh, but he's, he's great. Um, he's pretty calm, but he gets pretty excited out there too. And I think he puts things in perspective just because of his great attitude at the same time, I think that my parents have always, my parents actually and my coach have done a good job of putting things in perspective for me. Um, nothing is, is really life or death, especially on the golf course. And, you know, as long as my, my family is doing well and they're healthy, um, I have food to eat at night and I have a roof over my head and people that care about me, I don't think that um, anything really changes for me. Um, at the same time, sometimes I think people forget about that. And Mo is a daily reminder. Um, people ask him all the time what's happening with his house. And we've been gone so much that nothing has happened with his house. And he's the first person to say that he's not the only person in Houston with this situation. There's been plenty, plenty of people who have lost their homes and had a lot of issues. They've had unbelievable flooding this year, so we can't forget that. And there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world that, uh, that is important as well. So uh, he's going to be okay, 
and um, he will probably knock that house down and find a nice condo. And uh, I keep paying him, and he keeps, you know, growing his bank account, and uh, and he's it'll be great. So I don't think that. I necessarily won and had a good season because of that, but sometimes, you know, things all work out. And luckily, I was able to write him a very good check, and uh, I know he will put that to good use, and it probably came at a great time for him. All right. Any other questions for Chris? All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Have sure. a great week. Thanks. Thanks.